Welcome to Growing in Grace, a weekly program featuring informal conversation to help with growth in understanding the gospel and to live in the freedom that comes through Jesus Christ. And now, here's the hosts of Growing in Grace, Mike Kapler and Joel Barizaki. Hey, uh, welcome again to Growing in Grace. I'm Joel, and of of course, as usual, with me, I've got my good buddy Mike Kapler. He's uh, with me, and we're uh, getting set to... Uh, we're going to just tear down some walls today, Mike. <laughs> we, got, we got some things on our minds, uh, just uh, some good, sensible things to talk about, things that are in the Bible, but sometimes, you know, the church kind of has, has tended to misconstrue things, at least in your mind and in my mind, and we're just going to kind of lay some of this stuff out. I, I hope you're doing good, Mike. I'm having a, a really busy week here with some of the flooding that's been going on in Iowa. Uh, by the time... Uh, our listeners actually listen to this that will have been in the past but right now we're dealing with that stuff well and you know joel i like walls i mean i have them all over my house (laughs) uh i have them at work our church has walls inside the building so i I would like to prefer uh, to think that we're going to build some new walls uh while tearing down some of these old ones there we go you got to deconstruct before you reconstruct (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, as some of our listeners know, and if you're here for the first time, uh, thanks for tuning in. Tell a friend we're here, and we would love to hear from you, too. We'll tell you maybe at the end of the program how you can drop us an email and contact us. But uh, we're uh, located in Iowa. Joel is at his house. I'm at mine. But uh, in eastern Iowa, we've had terrible flooding here in 2008, and uh, a lot of people are having trouble with their walls and and other things and so uh, our thoughts and and prayers are with people who are are having some struggles with that and it's it's just even hard to get around on the roads in in iowa right now Uh, detours are practically hundreds of miles out of the way to get to where you want to go if you're just traveling through Mm -hmm. but uh... but joel the walls you're talking about tearing down are are some of these mindsets even theology doctrine phrases that we use sometimes in Christianity. I, I want to maybe start out with this. Um, back in the, the mid-90s, I guess, probably around 1994, is when I, and I, I uh, was in my 30s at that time. I had been a Christian since about the age of 10. And so, you know, I, I'd been involved in the evangelical church for quite some time. But I had reached a point where I, I wasn't frustrated with God or um, my faith in Jesus didn't really waver, nothing like that. But I was frustrated with some of the uh, contradictions uh, that I began to, to see, uh, even within myself and, and, and with the, some of the doctrine I had been taught, some of the doctrines that I had believed and, and held dear and were a big part of my life, but they, they didn't really seem to add up. In other words, sometimes we're, we're, we're preaching and teaching and believing one thing, but then we turn our heads over here and and we say something that doesn't necessarily agree at all with what we thought we held to be true and and i began to run into some things where i was just getting frustrated with the religious system that i had been brought into which would affect probably just about everybody else listening right now and i i started questioning some things uh, about some basic doctrines that most of the christian church believed one of those that i had been around a lot of uh, and had experienced much in my own life was this, for, for lack of a better phrase, the, the, the doctrine of rededication. You know, you, mm-hmm. you backslide and you, you're not living up to the standard that you had set for yourself or the standard that you thought God had for you. Uh, you fell back into sin. You did some of the wrong things. You started cussing again. And, and yeah, all these different things that could be taking place in your life that made you feel so guilty, you would come to the point where you felt like you had to almost get born again, all over again, where you would rededicate your life. And whether that was in the privacy of your own bedroom or uh, going forward at church or an evangelical Billy Graham meeting, but it was almost as if you didn't feel like you were saved and you needed to get, uh, or at least assure yourself that you were saved. I I don't want to say you you were getting re-saved. But in the minds of a lot of people, that's exactly what it was. And and I got frustrated with that because we would tell people one thing about the free gift of Jesus Christ, eternal life through him and and trusting in him alone apart from works. And then when our works don't live up to what we think they're supposed to be, then we are told that it's time to rededicate. And I didn't think that that was one of those things that added up. Yeah, yeah, that's one of those things where when, when I talk about deconstructing, uh, before re- reconstructing that whole rededication thing, uh, really 
uh, had an impact on my life in like you're saying, we'll say that uh, it's free to come to Christ, but then when when our works aren't measuring up, it's up to us to to rededicate ourselves. And my what I came to uh, see, the way I came to see it was, what makes me think that uh, it was up to my dedication in the first place that got me saved or that was keeping me saved because like you say on the one hand we'll say it was the blood of jesus it was the sacrificial death of jesus christ uh, that saved us nothing that we did it wasn't uh, any you know there was there was nothing we could do to save ourselves and then yet uh when we find that we're failing uh, it's it's up to us, and, and we got to rededicate ourselves. And, and I had to kind of deconstruct the whole idea that it was up to my dedication to God that was keeping me saved. Yes, I want to be dedicated to God. I, I, I love I want to love God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. I want to serve people. I want to love people. But what I've come to understand that's that's a, now a fruit of of knowing God's dedication and His faithfulness to me. And so now, when I find that I'm failing or not living up to a certain type of life that I would like to have, it's not a matter of me trying to dedicate myself more, but just growing and and understanding more God's love and dedication for me. And so this is one of those things where, indeed, it wasn't making sense to me either, just like you were saying about yourself. It's one of those things I needed to deconstruct things, take things apart, and build things again on another foundation. And that foundation is God's faithfulness. Well, yeah, so this this uh, so-called doctrine of rededication, I, I really don't think there is such a thing, biblically speaking, under this new covenant, because we talk about blessed assurance. The Bible talks about the assurance that we have, the confidence we can have through faith in Jesus Christ, but then we start spewing out some of these things that sort of make you scratch your head and, and wonder just where you stand with God. I better make sure I'm right with God. And so we go back to the altar, so to speak, figuratively speaking, or the altar at the church or whatever, and we, and we ask God to forgive us again. And, uh, and I'm going to rededicate. I'm going to try harder. I give myself to you. Clean me again, Lord. And whatever it is that we say to try to make sure that we're uh, in proper standing with God. And then we walk away feeling so much better because we got that off our chest. But I, I just I don't believe that there is such a thing as that. But unfortunately, a lot of Christians get into that cycle because they haven't really understood that they have already been forgiven, already been declared righteous, not by what we have done, but by what Jesus Christ has done. Yeah, and another thing that kind of goes right along with this is um, is the phrase "fallen from grace," you know, because we're talking here about what people normally consider to be backsliding in the Christian life, and how we're kind of looking at that a little bit differently. And the phrase that Paul used, uh, "You foolish Galatians, you have fallen from grace." Paul, when he was criticizing the church in in Galatians, he was criticizing this group of people uh, who had uh, who had, in a sense, backslidden. But the thing is is that their backsliding, their falling from grace, wasn't a matter of they had uh, been doing a whole bunch of good things, they were really doing good, living their Christian life, and then all of a sudden they started doing some bad things. Now, of course, there are Christians who do that, and that is a concern. You know, people who start you know, going off and living in sin, but that's not what Paul was talking about when he, when he mentions fallen from grace. These people, the reason they had backslidden away from God and fallen away was because they had gone from trusting solely in God's grace, trusting that his grace not only saved them, but kept them. And that all of their works, everything that they did in the Christian life was a matter of God's grace and and nothing that they had produced in and of themselves. They had fallen from grace. They were foolish. Paul says, who has bewitched you? Uh, You started off well. And and again, that's one of these things where in the church, you you guys started off good. You were doing all the right things. And then you started, you, you stopped going to church every week. You stopped reading your Bibles. You stopped witnessing. Uh, But really, that's not what falling from grace is. That's not what backsliding is in the sense that Paul's using it in in Galatians. It's a matter of uh, you you started off well, and that is you trusted solely in the grace of God, and now you've fallen away from that. You're trusting again in, in your own works. That's exactly what he said. So if you had a preacher come to your church this weekend and started telling you 
that you as a congregation had fallen from grace, if, if that's the first time you'd ever heard that phrase, most people would think that I've fallen from grace. That would usually mean uh, in the minds of most Christians today that they aren't doing enough of the right things, they're doing too much of the wrong things, they've fallen from grace, they've backslidden into a place where God is angry with them, or at least not, not happy with them. And yet the, the opposite is true. Paul told the Galatians in chapter 5, Stand in the liberty by which Christ has made you free. Do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage, which would be the law. Again, uh, anyone who becomes circumcised to every man, Paul says, I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. You've become estranged from Christ. You who attempted to be justified by works, you have fallen from grace. So when you go to trust in what you do, that's falling from grace, uh, not the other way around. I think this is so important for the church, you know, people in the church to know, for Christians worldwide to know. Just because, it, it, again, we're dealing with opposites here. We're dealing with what's usually taught in the church versus what the Bible actually says. And uh, so many times I've heard what you've just uh, shared there from, from the beginning of Galatians 5. You know, do not be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. People will take that verse right there, rip it right out, and say, See, all your sins they are causing you to be in bondage. Uh, don't get yourself entangled in sin because it's bondage. Now, of course... Sin is bondage. You know, uh, being in sin, that's not a good thing. But the point of what Paul is saying in this chapter of Galatians is that you were made free in the Lord Jesus Christ. You were set free from the law of sin and death. Don't let yourself be entangled again in that the bondage of the law. And he goes on to say that, like you said, like you just read, Every, everyone who comes becomes circumcised, he's a debtor to keep the whole law. If, if you try to keep one law, you're indebted to keep the whole thing. And you've become severed from Christ. You've become estranged from Christ if you're attempting to, to keep your justification by the law. You've fallen from grace. And so that's so important for the, for the church to know. We've got, we got about a minute left, Mike. Um, any uh, thoughts to wrap things up? Well, to wrap up on what you were just talking about there, Joel, obligated to keep the whole law because and that's why we call it the law sure there were a whole bunch of laws but what paul is saying is if you're going to try to get on a soapbox of one law you're you're obligated to keep all of the laws all 600 and some laws become one uh, just like if, if you were to break one law you're guilty of having broken all of them if you're going to try to keep a certain segment of the law you're uh, obligated to try to keep the whole thing. It, it, it's a package deal, and, and that's uh, why it's such a bondage, because nobody could do it. Uh, there isn't a law that can make one righteous. If there was, one would have been given, Paul said earlier in the book. And so uh, we'll, we'll have some more fun things to talk about when it comes to, to knocking over some, some of these uh, doctrines or sacred cows. Uh, I look forward to it in the weeks ahead, Joel. Yeah, well, uh, hey, man, hey, this is fun. This is good stuff. Just, just you know, getting to the the truth, the nitty gritty of the Word of God, and and uh, the freedom that uh, God has given us. If there's an opportunity for us to slip in our email address, Joel, or how people can contact us and let us know they're listening, uh, go ahead and do that, and then we'll see you next week. Yeah, you bet. Uh, check us out at graceroots.org. You can contact us through that website, graceroots.org, and we do hope uh, to, uh, for you to be with us, with us again next time. You've been listening to Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Baruzaki, a weekly program featuring informal conversation to help with growth in understanding the gospel and to live in the freedom that comes through Jesus Christ.